All right. I lost you. Okay. Now, the basic thing again, guys, is the process. The, the, the reason why I showed you guys that first one, <clears throat> because the process and everything we're doing is exactly the same. We're not changing anything as far as the process. We still have a divisor, we still have a dividend, and we're still going to have a quotient. The only difference is, if you guys remember last one, our divisor was one single term, correct? Now we have the sum of terms called a polynomial. So whenever you guys have your divisor is not linear, meaning it's raised to like the second power, raised to the third power, or so forth, you have to use long division. Have to. Anytime you have a quadratic or higher, you have to use long division. If it's linear, like x plus 2, we'll use synthetic division, which we'll talk about later. However, um, the other thing that goes into this is, since we have terms separated, we're only going to use the first term of the divisor. So when we're dividing into our quotient, we're only going to think about that first term. All right. Um, the uh, something else I wanted to say, I don't remember. So when it comes up to it, I'll, I'll maybe reiterate it. So again, so long division. Basically, what we're asking you is x squared how many times? So we're always going to use this as our divisor. How many times does x squared divide into x to the fourth? And if you have problems with this, I get like it doesn't make sense. Can you put that away, please? It doesn't make sense why some students, I, get, I see the wrong answer, but they don't work it out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand how many times x squared divides into x to the fourth, then write it on the side of your paper and just do it. X, how many times does x squared divide into x to the fourth? Well, we did the rules of exponents, right? This would be x to the four minus 2, which equals x squared. right? So if you don't understand how many times x squared goes into x to the fourth, just write it out to the side. It's x squared. So my first term is of my quotient is x squared. Now, since my divisor, though, has three terms, I have to multiply that quotient, that portion of my quotient, times every single one of them. So when I multiply every single one of them, I now get x to the fourth minus 2x cubed um, minus x squared. Does everybody see that? Okay. Now, there's two different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the, the way that, yes. Um, why is it negative? Or oh, it should be a positive, right? That should be a positive, right? I don't know where I was seeing a negative. Sorry, that's positive. Thank you. All right. So now, here's the, I'm going to show you the way that makes sense. That's like the other problem. And then I'm going to show you a way to prevent making mistakes. So the first way is just like we did before, is you subtract the rows. A lot of students make mistakes with this, though, because it's subtraction x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is just zero. zero. Right? So we don't really, right, I'll just put it in. Negative 2x cubed, you always have to go back to the subtraction side. Negative 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. You owe me $2. You borrow two more dollars. You now owe me negative 4x cubed. 3x squared minus a negative. Minus a negative makes it like adding, right? It's the same as adding. So in, ra in reality, um, that's going to be a positive 4x squared. Okay, Then you can bring down those terms, or you can just leave them up there and bring them down when you, when you need them. That's the way I like to do it. I don't, you could bring them down. I just like to only bring them down when needed. So now we do the whole process over again. x squared divides into, yes? Um, why isn't it like 0x cubed? You right here? It is. It is 0x to the fourth. This one? Yeah. If you owe me negative 2 minus 2, you owe me $2, you borrow two more. You owe me $4. Right? That's exactly, that's basically what that's saying. Um, but this is 0x to the fourth, which is just 0. So that's why I just write 0 there. So now we do the process again. x squared divides into negative 4x cubed. Write it to the side if you need to. That becomes negative four x. Then I take this term and I multiply it by all three of them again. So negative four um, x, negative four x times x squared is become a negative four x cubed. Negative four x times two x becomes a negative six x squared. <laughs> <laughs> 
How many times does neg x squared divide into negative 4x cubed? Well, x cubed divided by x. Do you agree with me x cubed is x times x times x? Do you agree with me x squared is x times x? Right. So x squared x squared goes into negative two x cubed. Here. No, no, you're not going back up to this one. Oh. You're doing this one. X squared, you're always going back to you're always going back to the front term of the divisor. So we first did this one, we subtracted the rows. Now we're doing this one. X squared goes into four x cubed, negative four x squared times. Now we're multiplying them back again. Where? Times yeah, I don't know where so that is. Negative 8x. I don't, man, I'm like, I'm making those middle mistakes. Sorry about that. And then negative 4x times negative 1 is going to be a positive 4x, right? Mm -hmm. OK. So now when we go and subtract the rows, now this one, again, as I mentioned, there's this way, which is perfectly fine. But in reality, I want you guys to think about this. In reality, you guys, when you're subtracting the rows, you're basically subtaining this minus that. Now, do I have anything to subtract this negative 4x from? I do, but it's way up there, right? So, and now I need it, so I'm going to bring it down. Okay? So I only like to bring them down when needed. I need it now. Now, you're basically saying this minus that. I will tell you guys, almost everybody makes problem the, we, the, the way that students make mistakes in long division is subtracting. So to avoid subtracting, if you said 5 minus 4, you can always rewrite that as 5 plus a negative 4, right? So my recommendation to you would be to change the problem to an addition problem, and then just change the sign of every term. Then it's much easier. Then you're just adding. So if you, instead of making it minusing everything, Make add and then just change the signs. Basically, you're distributing that negative and change it into an addition problem. It's just a different way to think about it, but I tell you, majority of people make mistakes when they subtract. So here, let's look at it. Negative 4x cubed plus 4x cubed is 0. And then I have 4x squared plus 8x squared is 12x squared. Um, then I have um, negative 4x plus positive 4x is? Oh, it is negative 8x. Thank you. I know I didn't even notice my own negative. Should have written that in better. So it's a negative x. Now again, we do the same process. How many times does x squared divide into 12? Well, not the x squared goes into the x squared once, but then there's that 12 there, right? So it goes in there 12 times. Now I need to multiply the 12 times all three of the terms. So in doing that, I have 12 times x squared is 12x squared. 12 times 2x is going to be a positive 24x. And then 12 times negative 1 is a negative 12. Since I'm subtracting the rows, I'm going to bring that one down. Then I basically am going to. Do you, guys, do you guys understand how I add the negatives, basically? Same thing as subtracting. So I'm just going to say I'm going to add the negative. Same operation as subtracting, adding the negative. All I did was added them, and I made them negative. It'll make your life a lot easier. This, again, goes to 0. Negative 8x plus negative 24x is a 32x. 6 plus 12 is plus 18. No, it's a negative. Yep. Man, that's three mistakes for this problem. Um, minor ones. So you guys can see that my quotient, if I was going to write out my quotient, is x squared minus 4x plus 12 plus my remainder over my divisor. So that would be technically what your quotient is. Q of x, sometimes we call it. Anybody have any questions on that? <laughs>